Hey, I'd like you to meet uh, James Gabbert, uh, the owner of Defiance. Uh, he's the owner for 40 some odd years, uh, and uh, the boat is as immaculate now as she was when she was launched, and probably better. Uh, I, I'll tell you one thing, Bill, because I wanted to shake your hand, but with uh, in this probably 10 years from now, we'll, we'll be watching this video. So yeah, we well, yeah. Well, <laughs> what, okay. What's with these strange people? <laughs> so if we're around in 10 years, yeah. <laughs> if the virus hasn't killed us all. Today we're at Village West Marina in Stockton. Uh, uh, Claude and uh, Aaron Pellerin, the owners, have uh, generously donated their docks to uh, our uh, activity here. And uh, Dick's going to be turning 100 on the uh, 17th, uh, Tuesday coming up. And today's, uh, by the way, today is also Rusty Arias' birthday, who's uh, kind of co-sponsor of the event. So uh, anyway, maybe uh, Jim can tell you a little bit about his uh, boat, which is one of the absolute most fascinating vessels I've ever been on. Not only that, Bill, but it <laughs> is such an incredible vessel. She's 75 feet, uh, 85 feet. And aluminum, and uh, she was built in 1972, launched in 72. I bought it in 75. And of all the boats, I think this would be my third Stevens. It is probably one of the best sea boats that I've ever, I mean, it's incredibly comfortable at sea and heavy rough seas and all. We've done 40 trips to Los Angeles. Back wow. when I used to have the TV station, we'd take it down and have uh, clients and advertisers and dinner and everything. And it was just incredible, you know. It was wow. wonderful. She's aluminum. And two years ago, we had her up in Seattle and we did a complete uh, two-day survey where they checked the bottom and, like I said, she's aluminum. So they gauged the aluminum and everything. And in, 48 years, there's not one, not even a little bit of, 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 of any co corrosion or, or any of that. I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. So, so, um, so you cruised her up there and then we're up, had, did a survey and had her painted up there? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's the first time because, believe it or not, I used to spray it all the time because when they first came out with the linear polyurethane two-part paints, is um, most people didn't know how to do it. And when I was going to college at Stanford, on vacation time, I'd paint cars at a car really? dealership. So I learned how to spray paint and everything. And so it, it turns out I ended up probably one of the best. All grip was the paint they used in those yeah, days. Yeah. Too. And I it probably ended up one of the best painters in California. No kidding. And uh, this was the first time that I took it to Seattle and had it done at uh, Delta Boat Works up in Seattle. Well, but I supervised it all and yeah. mixing the paint and how it was all done. Yeah. And if you look at it, it's just incredible. It I is think. beautiful. I've actually been uh, looking at her yeah. all, all over the weekend. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful, Jim. Uh, you know, so every time I meet you or see you, there's some new kernel of fantastic information that comes out. <laughs> Jim, uh, I, to the best of my knowledge, started FM radio in the Bay Area back in the uh, 50s. 57. 57. We, you know what? At the time, there were in San Francisco, believe it or not, today, because I know somebody who's 30 years old, and they say, I've got this thing in my car radio, it says AM. What is that? <laughs> okay. And in 1957, nobody knew what FM was. Right. There were like two or three FM stations on the air, and we picked, we had a, a bunch of channels, we frequencies, and I picked 101.3 because of Highway 101 and felt it was promotable. Yeah. And then we all of a sudden, we were one of the first FMs in the country that we were profitable from the day we went on the air. We made ten dollars the first month wow. profit, wow. and then we were. I put the first stereo signal on in 1961, and in the country, we were the only FM stereo on in the country for one year. Wow! And a lot of other engineering pioneering feats we did with K101 and. Uh, yeah. But I know every time I talk to you, I, I lived in Honolulu and we were talking about Jay Aku hit Pupuli and people over there. And, uh, yeah, we used to own KIKI in Honolulu. And uh, at the time we built, an, oh, well, this is a funny story, we built this FM, brand new FM in, in Honolulu. And here in San Francisco there was a station called uh, the Camel. It was an animal. So I'm sitting at the uh, Sharon Monkey Key and I said, gee, um, we need to do an animal. Just at this point, they're having a lure and they're carrying a pig by. So I called the FCC and found out the call letters KPIG were available. And we were going to go album rock. And then we found out somebody else is doing the same format. And this was in, uh, gosh, uh, 77 or so where disco became big yeah so we immediately changed and it became the disco pig oh, no. and it kicked 
butt in uh, Honolulu. You know, I mean, it was. We just had those Hawaiians discoing all over. Yeah, I mean, very it was cool. really, really interesting. You told me a story one time. Maybe it's, it's way in the past, so there probably won't be any kind of uh, ramifications legally. But about uh, your uh, a, a radio tower, you put or an FM tower, I think it was, and didn't have <laughs> proper credentials for. Uh, that was in Hawaii. No, it was a whole radio tower. In other words, there was the station KIKI. It was AM eighty three at a tower built in the Korean War, and it was not galvanized. It was black iron, and I don't know, the pieces are falling off of it. So we decided to replace it. Couldn't get building permits. So I just <laughs> rolled a 400-foot crane and had a police escort down Kalakawa, and we replaced the tower. You know, wow. just, I, I did most of the work you know, on the 400-foot crane, and uh, about three years later, they Somebody hit the newspapers that this tower was illegal. Hawaiian politics are a little different than the rest of the country. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I lived there from '68 to '75, and uh, there were all kinds of things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, one time, somebody called uh, a tree trimming company, and they came and cut down all the palm trees in front of the Aialani Palace there, which are the you know these palm trees have been there for a hundred years, and so nobody knew what happened. Or well, you know like the. Um, the interesting thing, in Oahu, there were 37 radio stations. And so think of the competition. And we came in with 10,000 watts at 830 and 100 kilowatts at 92.7. And within a year, we had 24% of the market. I mean, it was a breath of fresh air in Hawaii radio. Jim, you've owned three Stevens and several other yachts, so you're probably one of the most knowledgeable people around. So what is the... You know, the, the I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Back when Stevens were, you know, back in like the 70s, even, they started with 18 something, I think it was. They built the highest quality boat. They and Berger on the East Coast, the two of those were probably the best boat builders, detailed work and everything, in the country, wow. in the world almost. I mean, wow. they were really, really amazing. And you look at the workmanship they did. I mean, everything. The, the interiors, like they varnish, and then they take steel wool, for art, pumice powder and oil, and they rubbed the wood. I mean, wow. the thing was just a, their work of arts. And you look, and you look at this boat, how defiance. She's aluminum. She's meant. Look at all the curves, and I mean, yeah. and it's just incredible. Yeah, no, it's absolutely. So literally one of the most beautiful boats I've ever seen. So yeah, so you've had three Stevens and several other. Right, it started with a 47 footer and called Donella. No, the, it was Donella too. Donella one is there at the show. Yeah. And people didn't realize this, but you know where their name came from. It was Don Allen, and he reversed it, so it's Donella. And then I found out in Italy it was some kind of something. Yeah, the Queen Mother or something. something, or something yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that that was 47 foot. Which I thought at the time was because I went from a 27 foot boat to that 47 feet. It was like, wow. Then, um, about a year, bought a 55 foot Stevens, which was um, owned by the Stater Brothers. They had Stater Brothers Markets yeah, in yeah, California. Yeah. And it was, it was 55 foot, but they didn't like the galley being forward. So they, the only Stevens I know of, the galley is a midship. Wow. And I sold it to one of my ex-business partners who sold it to Elton John. So then uh, you got to your other uh, yacht. Uh, actually, she's in Washington now, right? She was she's up, up in Lake Union, yeah. yeah. That's and and today it's it's a Benetti. Benetti is like what Stevens was at the time. Benetti was, in, and they're off to 300 foot boats now. I mean, oh. 300 feet long. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. But this boat, Defiance, here she is, 48 years old, and I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah. It's just an incredible boat, the workmanship on it and everything. Yeah, that's most, one of the, literally, I mean, the, one of the two most beautiful boats I've ever been aboard. And your engine room, too, I mean, it's just sparkles. Well, that's, that's, that's my thing, okay. Uh, I went to, because um, this boat's never had a crew, and I went to, the, the engines are made by Detroit Diesel, so I went to Detroit Diesel School, got a diploma, says I'm a certified mechanic and it's the same thing with Caterpillar. So I do wow. I do all the engine maintenance and everything and, uh, and the boat's never had a crew. When I bought it from H.R. Haldeman's father, if you go back, I'm going back now, he's, Haldeman was the guy, the Nixon Watergate yeah, and yeah. that. And um, he had a crew of five on this boat. So you only have a crew of one, Tim, right? Yeah, <laughs> he does the varnish. And, uh, that's does he really? Oh, yeah. yeah. So you you lived aboard for 15 years? I think about 15 years. Yeah. It, when it was illegal. Uh, 
I could never run for office, <laughs> is um, we were in South Seattle Yacht Harbor and uh, Herb Madden, who owned the thing, says, you can live on it, but don't hang any laundry out on the mast or anything and just keep it quiet. Because now you can do, what, 10% in each marina? It's or 10 or 20, like something like yeah. that, or some, yeah. some requirement. But in those days, it was forbidden. You have a washer dryer aboard too, anyway, right? It's a <laughs> 1972 GE. Wow. Still works. Yeah. And uh, I, when I need parts, I go to eBay. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. And buy one that you know is in pieces. Yeah. And, and, oh uh, yeah. Take whatever I need. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's amazing. And it's really funny because we uh, the original galley was done. And remember, everything was harvest gold. All the appliances. And wow. It was pretty old, so I said time to change it. And the only way we could buy the refrigerator was went to Best Buy with a tape measure because of the height. Oh, it, yeah. There was an air conditioning duct. It had to be 63 inches wow. and all of a sudden refrigerators are 64. And this is it. It's in a matter. We'll take it. And that's why we did it. Yeah. And, uh, we had uh, uh, forklift. The boat was in dry dock. Forklift. Take the doors off. Had to take the screws out of the back because they wouldn't quite fit and took all the molding off the window to wow. get it in. Wow. It's here to stay. But you, okay, you basically led the uh, colony parade in uh, Sausalito for The lighted boat parade, I've been so. Grand Marshal for 32, 33 years. How would you like to see the boat? Oh, I'd love what, to. A complete tour of the boat, okay? Excellent. Let's, let's go do that right now. Okay, okay. sounds good. Okay, okay. Bill, uh, you know, as we're showing you the boat and everything, there's one person responsible for the bright work, the varnish, and does a lot of the maintenance and all, and that's Tim. And we very good, Tim. We called him <laughs> Captain you. Tim, and uh, he said the two of us do all of the work on the boat and run yeah. it together. You know, Gosh, right. that's absolutely yeah. amazing. This is absolutely I mean, stunning yeah. interior. So we're right here in the main salon, which yeah. is about I think it was 400 and something square feet. Wow, you know, is the main salon, and uh, it's almost as big as my living room, <laughs> close yeah. to it. So. Yeah. And the galley, uh, we totally, totally, totally have redone that. We modernized uh, completely. Let's head on down. Yeah, let's take now, a let's look. go this way. Jim, is this a Stevens table too? No. So when you're like, say you're cruising in the high seas, what uh, do you just leave the table like that, or you yeah, bat it, it down? It doesn't. Well, no, no. So. But here, you know, obviously the appliances are new and everything. Everything here was when the boat was built was Harvest Gold, which was in in 1972. Yeah, right. I remember and that. So you'd come on the boat and look at the galley and say 1972. Yeah. So I think it was about four or five years ago we decided to redo it all. And by the way, it's really beautiful. The field is here. That's brushed. No kidding. I brushed it. Gosh darn. With all grip or something? Or no, no, just the uh, paint. Wow. That's beautiful. These, these knobs push in the lock? Yeah. Yeah. They go in. Yeah. That's really beautiful. That's granite, right? Yeah. The only one mistake I made was it should have had a little lip on it. Because uh, things slide off. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Kind of like the lighting. You did all this, redid the lighting, right? Yeah. 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 This was called. <laughs> Um, what is it? MDF, I think it is, you know, the particle board. Oh, yeah. So I cut, I made a, a computer drawing of the whole thing and then made templates and cut it and then I sprayed them all in our garage at home. And they're stuck up with, it's a stuff called Sherlock. It's an industrial uh, Velcro oh. to get it down. Wow. But it gives us access to all of the wiring yeah. and, um, and all of that. Yeah, so. that's amazing. Gosh, aren't you? <laughs> it looks like it all came from the factory like this. Uh, no, yeah. it was uh, different. So yeah. let's go. Let's go to the wheelhouse. Okay, sounds good. Uh, like a glass bridge. There's no. We don't use paper. All the charts, everything are uh, electronic. electronic. Jim, it looks like you have two stations for the electronics. Is that right? right? And it's all. This is what's called a glass bridge. And they do this a lot in aviation and a newer, you look at some of the new boats and they have screens across. Yeah. And what I did in this, there, it's a system that has depth and I mean all of the stuff that's required for navigation, we don't use any charts anymore and it's redundant. These two computers are networked, but if one fails, it goes off on its own. So, and it comes from separate power supplies and complete independence as far as if one failed you've got another you've got a backup yeah, you're all I'm assuming you probably did that all yourself yep and the worst part of it is <laughs> if somebody buys the boat I never documented it. and everything was here all of it you know and I just recently put that there used to be fuses they put that circuit breaker oh, no pan in yeah gosh I still got so I got a combination fuses and circuit breakers yeah. on my boat I th there were so many of those 
automotive fuses? Yeah, that's so right. there's so many. And I said, God, so you know, you get back on it, and it looked like. Jim, uh, on your display, so it looks like GPS on the left side, and then a, is that a depth finder? The depth a, sounder. So yeah, one point six feet under your keel, right? Under there? us, yeah. yeah. So um, that, not very much. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So as we come up to Village West, by the way, is that Aaron and Claude, who you know own the marina here, right. it's probably one of the best kept marinas I've ever been in in California. Yeah, I agree. It's so meticulous. I noticed the other day they were washing all the light standards and everything. Yeah. And uh, just love coming up here. Yeah, same here. So you know, just a, a little aside. So we're staying in one of the bungalows, and uh, so the the cleaning ladies and stuff. Every time I walk outside, I'm oh, how are you, how are you doing, Mr. Wells? And they're just what charming, wonderful people. So anyway, no, it's uh, it's unfortunate that the Taste of the Delta was canceled this year. Yeah. Taste of the Delta was something where you put it together. Don't right. So that they take um, a like the all the wineries and food and restaurants and and it's a major two days is it or one just day? one day one yeah. day yeah and it's just fantastic and they canceled it this year because of the uh, uh, COVID-19 but it, someday if, if you want to do something at the right time and when it's back and things are kind of back to normal you don't want to miss that it was just incredible thank you yeah it's a good good event we put on so but Jim, it's so beautiful. That is that. Uh, is that your VHF radio over there? There's a no. That that there is that thing. The AIS. Thing. Oh, the they're, AIS. They're like uh, uh, transducers in airplanes. In other words, it's so that there. lets any ship in the area show up. Yeah, and it it tells it tells everybody else where we're going, what our destination, what our heading is. Uh, um, are we going to hit each other? Yeah. Jim, is that a display for the autopilot or something? Hmm? Is that for like the autopilot? Which is it? The bottom one? No, it's a, it's a, it's an old-fashioned speedometer with a little wheel oh. which which broke. Uh -huh. And you can't get a new one, but I, if I take it out, I've got a hole. So yeah, I just left it. Yeah. You know, I had remember those old depth finders that had the rotating light? Oh, I had yeah. one of those oh. up until 10 years ago, yeah. and it burned out. I never could fix it, so I threw it away. But I love that thing. It made the whirring sound. Yeah, no, there. <laughs> Occasionally you find them. The other thing I put on this boat, I had the boat for um, almost 15 years without a bow thruster. And you look at how big this boat is, yeah. and you just learned how to do it. And I finally put the bow thruster on. Boatyard wouldn't, didn't want to cut the hole. It's a 14 inch hole in the, on the bow where yeah. the propeller goes for the bow thruster. I did it. Did you really? Yeah, uh, sure. And then I had the Healy Arc the, the thing in, and yeah. it was a total do-it-yourself job. It makes handling the boat incredible. Uh. Oh, I mean, okay, yeah, it's I really great. So the, the the thruster itself, does it come with the housing and everything, or no, you had to build no. all that yourself? I, it was a 14-inch aluminum pipe oh. cut, put in, welded, and then the thruster went inside of that. Oh. So do you have to paint the inside of it too, then, to mm -hmm. make sure it doesn't yeah. corrode? Yeah. yeah. Gosh, darn. <laughs> and and a lot of them are electric, but this one is hydraulic. And what's so neat about it, it's got this control here. Yeah. It's a little bit, a lot of bit. In other words, how, how much you want it to yeah, yeah. to do. How big are? And you get so used to it, you know. It just. Yeah. Uh, well, it'd be okay if we looked at your uh, engine room. Sure. Bill, this this is my office, you know, and th th this boat, normally this would be a pilot house and they'd have a flying bridge up above. Oh, okay. Yeah. But because of the way they did this, Stephen said, it, and this is one of a kind. They, they've made no other boat like this. Wow. It's the only one they ever made. Wow. And, and that's usually the way Stevens worked. Yeah. Is, um, where there, there was a period of time historically where Jack Rather, who used to own the Lone Ranger, uh -huh. he bought into the company and wanted to start produ mass production of boats. Stevens Brothers wouldn't have anything to do with that. Every boat is custom made. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way yeah. they did it up until the very end. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, this is, to me is maybe the favorite part of your boat is this uh, your office up here. The engine amazing. room, so cool. Yeah. The engine room. The engine, well, the engine room, yeah. <laughs> so is it, this like the original headliner then, or did you? No, know oh, no. This is. It had that, like the salon. In oh. There. And I, the reason I put this in here like this is you're right up at the pilot house and you have all the wires and everything coming down uh -huh. and then have access to it. Uh -huh. Jim, how did you get into flying? And well, you know, it, it's, it's really interesting because when I was going to Stanford, my roommate was a little private pilot and I wanted to learn how to fly. Uh -huh. Now, when we started the FM station, um, I was doing morning drive 
and they wouldn't let me fly because they felt it was dangerous. So they said, Jim, you can have a boat. <laughs> and I was thinking, wait a minute, the boat sinks, I walk on water, I mean, yeah. what's the difference? Okay. Right, yeah. So I ended up with a 27-foot Trojan little cabin cruiser, yeah. then it went up to the 47-foot Stevens and all, and finally when I bought the company out in 1980, I ended up owning the whole company, I uh, decided I was going to learn how to fly. Wow. And I started, you know, with little tiny airplanes, and ultimately when we sold the uh, TV station and everything, I bought an Executive 727 Boeing, which I flew for 4,000 hours, wow. going all over the world in it. And yeah. and that's that's how it happened. And yeah. here I've never done it for a living, and I got my pilot's license pretty late, and I've got over 11,000 hours, you're and right. most of it flying jets. So you go, you, I know, last time I talked to you, you just come back from Dallas to... Uh, yeah, I have to so do that once a year. Once a year, wow. Yeah. It was the interesting part of it this year with the pandemic, everybody had to wear masks and oh, you know, wow. and, and you have an instructor and the, and the sim those simulators are like $20 million. The right? minute you get in them, you forget that you're in a simulator. Huh. The graphics on them today, big, wide, high definition. I mean, you're yeah. at Kennedy well, and you're at Kennedy Airport. I mean, you forget that you're in a simulator. Amazing. And of course, what they do is they throw the book at you. Because you want to learn how to, you know, yeah. you've got a limited amount of time in there. So you're taking off, you lose an engine, two wheels fall off, somebody dies in the back, and you know, <laughs> and how do you handle the stress? So now we're down in the engine room of Defiance. Uh, Jim is a, a certified uh, Detroit diesel, Detroit mechanic. diesel yeah. mechanic, um, <laughs> among his many other skills uh, that I keep learning about. So, Jim, you want to tell us a little bit about yeah, the these? Yeah, these are uh, twelve-cylinder diesels, Detroit diesel. They're, I think, about as I recall, seven hundred and fifty horses an engine. Wow! You know, and they're the originals, and um, and these over here are thirty thousand watt generators, and. Um, it's uh, the it's interesting because here the boat is 48 years old, okay, and these engines only have 3,900 hours in 48 years. Wow, that's amazing. You know the other boat we had, we had 20,000 in five years. Now these are beautiful. So let me have the uh, device in front. Is that the water pump for the cooling water? That's no. That pump right there is for uh, the hydro for the bow thruster. Oh, okay. it's a big wow. uh, engine driven hydraulic pump. Yeah, because it takes a, a lot of. Juice. It takes a lot of power to do it. Yeah, it looks like you a know. pretty powerful. Power. And uh, so it's got stabilizing fins, which uh, I used. The original fins were made by you know they're back in 1972. I used the same fins, but I replaced all of the brains with solid state, so they're much more efficient. They work so much better. Wow. And I did that about five years ago. I think it was six wow. years ago. Big difference. Oh. So yeah. that is like a, it takes a solid out. state, yeah, yeah, like a gyroscope though, right? Yeah. But no move they used parts. to have mechanical gyroscopes. Yeah. Now it's some kind of solid state device. And the other thing is uh, the stabilizer will keep the boat from rolling. Now, it doesn't keep you from doing this if you're in right, right, right. but you're not rolling. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Do they take any maintenance? Not really. No. Not really. It's the the old ones did because they have actual spinning gyros. Yeah. And you know, whereas this is a solid state box, God knows how it works. Yeah. But I know. Actually, I've heard about that. It's like, you know? like magic. Yeah. Oh. So each one of these is. These are 30 kilowatt thir thir generators per, per you generator. Can, you can't run them both. At, you have one or the other. Oh. So we just rotate them. And you carry 5,000 gallons of fuel. 5,000 diesel. Yeah. And with the generators going when you're cruising, obviously you're running the generator because you have lights and all that kind of stuff. And she burns 24 gallons an hour at 10 knots, 5,000 gallons. Figure out how far you're going to go. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of range. Yeah. And it has a water maker right over there, which makes like 1,500 gallons uh, a day of really? converting salt water to yeah. fresh water. Is that is that an osmotic process? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a gosh. That's amazing. That one little box does 1,500 gallons per day. Uh, a day. Amazing. You could take a hell of a lot of showers in that. Yeah, so. <laughs> that'd be good. So, Jim. So the batteries over there are those just being. Those are strictly or? for the generators. Oh. Okay. The engine batteries are in those boxes down there. Oh. Okay. And, and we did one thing talking about technology. The batteries used to be lead acid that yeah. you had to put water, dissolved right, right. water. These are gel cells. I put oh. them on. The I just replaced those, but 17 years wow. out of the same batteries. Huh. It made all of the difference in the world for you don't have to service them, you don't yeah. put water in them, and you know. 
You know how that is. Yeah, no, it's incredible. I've never had a battery last five years about the yeah. limit for me. And I was surprised. So then, you know, we have, if the one thing about this engine room, of course, is look at the ceiling. And like yeah. I, I major overhauled this one generator, and I was, you know, just picked it up and worked on it and put it back down again. I mean, it was um, just the, the working down here was a pleasure. You know, because you get on a lot of boats. And especially with the smaller ones, and you're on your hands yeah. and knees, oh, and, yeah. and you're bumping your head, and yeah. uh, you know, and so forth. And it, um, you know, this is like a regular shop. I mean, it, you can control everything from down here pretty much, right? It, then you, you saw the dashboard upstairs and everything, Stevens. The oil, they run eighth-inch copper pipes all the way up. Oh my God! The attacks are speedometer cables, and yeah. this one is electric. Wow. Okay, but so they run all the, they run the water, they run everything up there, and wouldn't it make sense to make this electric, to make, put the electric up there yeah, you'd think a lot so. easier? Yeah, far it's easier. A, it's just funny Whoa. things. Yeah, so, yeah, of course my boat is 1937, but yeah, I said my tack runs off the distributor and, and the yeah, yeah. you always got to be lubing it and everything, so. But they, they run, they run uh, for the water temperature, they actually run the water yeah. up. Yeah, um, amazing, yeah. The all eighth inch pipes. Wow. You know? And you, you have these going up to the bridge. Wow. Excellent. So these are, these are, oh, they are just supercharged, right? Nope. Oh. They're, in fact, they, they uh, yeah. I didn't want them to be supercharged because it cuts the engine life down. Yeah. And so these, they're 12, they're V12s, oh. and very rare. Or do you find one that is naturally aspirated that's not supercharged? Yeah. Those uh, air intakes look a lot like old GM uh, superchargers a little bit. No, actually, no, yeah. I look at them, they don't look that much like them. Well, see, don't forget, these are a two stroke engine. Oh. It's not, not a two cycle, two stroke. Oh, yeah, two cycle. Yeah. Yes. It goes up, compresses, which makes a lot of heat, explodes, comes down, and these are roots blowers that are blowing the exhaust out oh, okay. at, on, on the downstroke yeah. and it, so it fires every time it goes up. Yeah, okay. Very good. Well Jim, thank you so much. This is absolutely beautiful um, and uh, thanks for coming up and uh, I look forward to having... Kind of hard to believe that this boat is 48 years old. You know, you look at these engines, they yeah. look brand new. They do. I'd say your boat's in better so. shape than many 48-year-old people. <laughs> I can say you're in better shape than So anyway, I, I want to thank you very much. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah, and it was a pleasure showing you the boat, so really it, it was really fun.